Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and welcome back to another episode of Every Effect and After Effects Explained. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 3D channel folder. So this is a tough one to start out with because it goes a little bit out of the scope of just After Effects, but I'm going to show you the basics of what this is so you get an idea on what it's there for even if you might not always use it. For you to be able to use these effects, you have to be working with specific file types that After Effects can read 3D information of. So for example, if I am working in Cinema 4D, I can do something like create a default figure shape. And this guy has 3D information built into him. Uh, just for example, I'll add a buddy for him. So another one back there. And maybe we'll make this guy half as big. I'm going to add a couple rotations just so we can get some sample footage here. So in the bottom timeline, I'll add a action keyframe there and I'll go forward and add another one, maybe at a full rotation. So with some keyframes applied to just so I have some sample motion going on, I can head up here to edit the render settings and under save, I just want to make sure I change the format to something like RPF, which is has 3D information in that file. And under the output, instead of just rendering the current frame, I'm gonna render all the frames so we get some of that animation that I put in there. Also in the save menu, I can choose where to save the file. So I'll just save it as test 3D. So once you have that 3D RPF file set, I can press the play button up here to actually render it. And you'll notice that it renders an RPF file for each frame in the image. So we have 90 resulting files within this folder. Now, how do we import that into After Effects? Well, we can't just drag them in. We want to go to File, Import, and we're gonna import multiple files and select all of those in that test or whatever folder that we had and make sure we choose the RPF sequence option that it gives us here. So once I press OK, you'll see in our project media bin that RPF sequence should be there and you can create a new sequence or drag it into an existing sequence and you should have your little RPF clip. Now it's on this type of file that you can use the 3D channel effects. So if I was to use something like 3D channel extract and put it on there, it works kind of just like the extract effect would in Photoshop or Premiere, creating a separation between black and white points but in this case, just on the shape of your 3D objects. So you could choose a black point or a white point to set it at, and you'll see that everything just kind of turns black and white. Here's what it would be like if I inverted that. 3D channel extract also allows you to extract different types of ways. So you have different options for the type of extraction you're getting. And you can use this kind of effect in combination with other effects in After Effects to key in other effects or use this information as the mask or mat for another type of effect to fill in that place. So you can see why you'd want to use that extract effect maybe in combination with others rather than on its own. The next one, Crypto Mat, actually won't work on even this type of 3D file, RPF. This only works on other certain types like .exr files which have different layer information within them and you could choose a certain layer to kind of get a matte or mask, kind of like the 3D extract, but on individual layers. Next up, we have depth mat. This will slice the image at a certain point in the Z angle or like the back and forth of it. So if I increase the depth, you'll slowly start to see our character appear or disappear. Let's say, so I'm all the way at negative 1000 here. You see the characters appear from the background. And if I increase the feathering of that mat a little bit, you'll start to see some areas will pop out a little bit more solid than others. So if I find this sweet spot here where my characters can kind of get sliced right in half of the Z depth, you'll see that parts of them kind of fade away into the fog and parts of them pop out. Especially the little guy in the back is more faded. The guy in more closer to the foreground is not. So this is a way for you to kind of mat out based on a certain depth slicing. Another similar idea to that is depth of field. However, this allows us to add a blur or depth of field 
And in this way, you could blur from the background or you can even keyframe things to bring something into focus or out of focus in a 3D layer. The next one, Extractor, is another one that works on specific types of .exr files, which have different 3D channel information based on layers in them. So, but it has a similar idea to, to many of these. So I would recommend you look further into 3D programs, 3D types of files like .exr. And Fog 3D is similar to some of the, all these previous ones that we've been doing. In this case, it generates some fog. So I can choose a start and end depth that kind of dips in between my models. I can choose an opacity of the fog and a density of the fog. And you can see as the objects spin, maybe one arm will dip out of the fog more. You could choose the fog color as well. So in this way, you could even make the fog like a green screen for some other effect. ID Matte is another one that only works with certain types of specific 3D files where each object or layer in the file has an ID and you can select out or mat, create mats based on that layer. And the same goes for identifier where you're going to need certain types of 3D files that have ID channels and you can create different types of mats based on those layers. So that's a very brief and basic idea of what this channel, 3D channel folder even is. Again, you might not be going into this much if you don't work with 3D programs much, but hopefully this video gives you some basic introductory information into the purpose of this folder and why it doesn't work on certain layers or how it even is meant to work. So make sure you subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I'll see you over in the next episode where we're talking about all of the different audio effects that are available in After Effects.